Greetings everyone, I am Bala Hariharan, son of Mani Maran, matrix number 2210188. We are from group 7 and we are here to present the title Tidal Turbines for Clean Energy and Fluid Dynamics in Ocean Renewable Power Generation. Here we go for the abstract. Basically, the utilization of tidal turbines for energy production offers a promising avenue for environmentally friendly and sustainable power generation. This summary explores the fluid dynamics associated with tidal turbines, examining the intricate relationship between tidal currents and the blades of these turbines. By comprehending the com complexities of fluid dynamics in oceanic environments, researchers and engineers can optimize the design of tidal turbines improve efficiency and address potential environmental concerns. Tidal turbines operate in dynamic and challenging marine conditions where the interaction between tidal currents and turbine blades, blades is of paramount importance. This summary emphasizes fundamental principles of fluid dynamics governing the extraction of tidal energy including the effects of turbine, turbine placement, blade geometry and flow characteristics on the overall performance of the system. The investigation utilizes co computational modeling, experimental analysis, and field observation to unravel the complexities of fluid structure interaction within tidal turbine systems. Next, let me give a brief introduction on the given title. Basically, tidal energy, particularly using tidal turbines, has emerged as a promising frontier in ocean renewable power generation. This introduction provides an overview on the importance of tidal turbines in clean energy initiative, highlighting the crucial role, role that fluid dynamics plays, plays in optimizing the efficiency. Clean energy encompasses eco-friendly sources that minimize environmental impacts, particularly in terms of greenhouse gas emission and air pollution. It primarily relies on renewable energy from naturally replenishing sources like solar power, wind power, hydropower, and geothermal energy. Furthermore, these are the three prime points for the introduction part. First, importance of fluid dynamics. Fluid dynamics, the study of the motion of liquid and gas emerges as a critical aspect in the successful deployment of tidal turbines. The efficiency and performance of these turbines are intricately tied to the interaction between tidal currents and the turbine blades. Second, tidal turbines, which is advancing ocean renewable power. Tidal turbines represent a pivotal technological advancement in the domain of ocean renewable power generation. By harnessing the kinetic energy present in the tidal currents, these turbines have the potential to generate electricity on a large scale. Their deployment in marine environments introduce a dynamic interplay between the turbines and the surrounding fluid and necessitating an understanding of fluid dynamics to optimize performance and ensure the durability of the system. Third, growing interest in tidal energy. Tidal energy is defined as the conversion of the movement of ocean water volumes into electrical energy using various tidal systems. Tidal energy is potential energy created by tides, height changes in the sea level that are caused by the gravitational pull of the sun and moon coupled with the rotation of the earth. In recent times, tidal energy has gained substantial attention as a dependable and predictable source of renewable power. Moving forward, let me tell you a small interesting story relating to the given title. In the early days, tidal energy has a historical lineage reaching back centuries originating in the 7th century when tide mills were first employed primarily for grinding grains. For the past significant developments, the idea of, of harnessing power from tides was conceived by Dexter Cooper, he's an engineer, during 1920. The US Federal Power Commission conducted a study to evaluate the facility of installing tidal power plants in Maine and New Brunswick during 1924. The Lawrence Tidal Power Station, the world's pioneering tidal power plant, was commenced to operation in France during 1966. The Annapolis Tidal Power Plant, the inaugural tidal power plant in North America, initiated operation in Canada was during 1984. During 2007, the first ever tidal turbine system was erected at Strangford Law in Northern Ireland. After these revelations over the years, currently around 970 gigawatt hours of electricity are generated from marine energy including tidal and wave energy. 
Tidal energy remains a relatively recent and less explored technology necessitating increased investment and research. For the future prospect, the future of tidal energy relies heavily on further research and investments which until now have been hindered by financial and geographical challenges. As the last from my part, let me give a mild exposure regarding the importance of technology. Technology is basically the way we execute the discoveries of science and blend it with our own needs. Technology is a term used to refer to the different tools, machines and equipment we use in everyday life. Tidal energy encompasses, encompasses various systems designed to capture and convert the renewable energy produced by the gravitational forces between the Earth, Moon and Sun and it also considered as clean energy. This system includes tidal stream systems, tidal range systems, tidal kite systems, oscillating water columns, tidal stream generator, tidal energy converter, in-stream tidal energy converter and lastly dynamic tidal power which is also known as DTP. For the next slide, we will talk about the basic operational theory. Clean energy is energy that does not make the, the air dirty or use up the resources that will run out. Tidal turbines are machines that make electricity from the water moving in the ocean. They use signs to make the most power and have the least impact on the environment. Tidal power can help stop blooming can help stop global warming by replacing dirty energy resources. But tidal turbines can also change the ocean life and activities. So they need to plan well. Okay, for the next slide is we will talk about the advantages of tidal turbines. First point is renewable and sustainable. Tidal power uses the movement of water caused by the moon and the sun. It does not need to it does not need any fuel or make any waste. It does not make the the earth, the earth hotter or change the weather. It can keep working for a long time and does not change with the weather. For the second point is predictable and real, reliable. Tidal power is easy to predict because it follows the moon and the sun. It can give electricity all the time unlike the wind or solar power. It can it can work with other types of power to meet the needs of people. For the third point of advantages of tidal turbine it is high power output. Tidal power can make more electricity than wind power with less space and equipment. This is because water is heavier than air. Tidal power can use some places where it needs. Okay, for the next slide is we will talk about the disadvantages of tidal turbine. First point is tidal turbine is high costs. Tidal power is very costly because it needs a lot of money and work to build and run the plants. It also has to compete with other types of power that are more cheaper and better like wind and solar power. For the second point is limited location. Tidal power can only work in some places where the water moves a lot and is deep enough. These places are not common uh, around the world. This this means that tidal power cannot grow much or make much money if doesn't meet a nice place to build it. Tidal power also has to be careful not to harm the sea life and the people who live near the sea. For the last point is environmental impact. Tidal power can change the way the water flows and the dirt settles. This can hurt the animals and plants in the water. Uh, this is uh, this can also affect the balance of nature and the health of people. Tidal power can also make it hard 
for boats and fishes to use the water. Hello everyone, my name is Muhammad Aliza from Samsudin. My part is to show and explain some information about the design that I have made some research. The design I have done research are the Hemophast Strom, Sijin Turbine and the Sabela D10. So, enjoy the video. The first design is the Hammer, the Hammerfest Strom. The Hammerfest Strom that the project was installed in Kvasun in Finnmark County, Norway at a 50 meter depth in the sound between Kvasun and Kvaloya. The HS300 horizontal exit turbine device was installed in 2003 and grid connected in 2004 which made it the world's first tidal turbine delivering to the grid. The submerged structure weighed 120 tons and had the gravity footing of 200 tons. Its three-bladed turbine was made in glass fiber, reinforced plastic and measured 10 meters from hub to tip. The device rotated at 7 rpm with an installed capacity of 0.3 megawatt. The trading license held by the Hammerfest Strom AS was given in 2002 and need to be renewed every fourth year. The great honor in the installation area is the Hammerfest Energy AS. The second design is CJ Turbine. CJ Turbine was the world's first commercial scale tidal turbine. It was developed by Marine Current Turbines MCT when was commissioned in Northern Ireland Strang 4 loop in July 2008. The turbine as a whole weight 1,000 and is 43 meter wide from tip to tip. Designed by engineer Peter Frankel, the rotor drove a generator that sent energy along a cable that then linked into the national grid across the loop in Strangford village. Sijin took approximately 14 days to install with the system being bolted onto the loop bed. Sijin briefly delivered 150 kilowatt of electricity into the grid while it was being commissioned in July 2008. Both turbines reached their full capacity in November 2008. The decommissioning process for the project began in May 2016 and included removal of two 600 kilowatt powertrains. The top side and cross beam were taken out in August 2018, while the remaining tower and subsea structure were removed thereafter. The CGN worked much like an underwater wind mill, with the rotors being driven by the power of the tidal current rather than the wind. And lastly of my design is the Sabella D10. So the Sabella D10 is from from the passage of the coast of Ocean Island, Brittany. The project consists of the construction and 12-month deployment of an industrial tidal stream generator from in from the passage, also known as St. Vincent's Channel. During slight water periods in May 2015, the cable to export the electricity produced was installed between the generator site and the coast of Ocean Ushan. In June 2015, the D10 was lowered into the from the passage in a water depth of 55 meter. By November 2015, the D10 was connected to the island network via the previously installed cable. The D10 was the first tidal turbine to supply electricity to the French grid. The generator is 70 meter high and has a footprint of 20 times 20 meter. It's 10 meter rotor and can generate 1 megawatt from the currents in the Fromver Passage. The Sabella D10 work project was nominated in 2011 as part of the Marine Renewable Energy Demonstrators called for interest launched by ADEME, a French agency for environment and energy management, and received funding through the Investment for the Future National Program. Then I will show you a full year of trade and environmental monitoring for the D10 project. So the first one is electricity production and injection to the grid. Sabella D10 has produced more than 70 megawatt hour between November 2015 and March 2016, reaching maximum power output around 400 
kilowatt during the, this period. The injection to the grid has been supervised by EDF, SEI and ENEDIS producer and administrator of the ocean grid. On the other hand, the signal quality produced by D10 has been controlled and validated by EDF, CI and NEDIS regarding its voltage, frequency and harmonic. The optimistic result of D10 offer a new perspective of a 1 MW maximum power output possibility for the second campaign of trial. The second one is control, command and driving. The damaged export cable has generated functional losses and driving issues but it has allowed to test different ways of driving and the control or command of this device has been improved with new electronic redundancies. The initial redundancies has have already allowed to check the exploitation flexibility of the device even in a deteriorated running. The third one is environmental monitoring. The improper laying and the partial damage to the export cable have disturbed the environmental data acquisition for some sensors. However, the regi registered data by the autonomous sensors have clearly confirmed the innocuous of the device toward the submarine fauna and flora as well as the acoustic emergence and for the lastly sizing and structural behavior during this full year of experimentation D10 has been dealing with diverse environmental condition including high tidal coefficient and several winter storms thanks to all the embedded sensor and in situ scuba diving observation operation the mechanical integrity of the device has been ensured. The following conclusion has been drawn. Excellent structural holding of the rotor efficient stabilization on the ship and no movement of the structure. No vibration modes with damage to the device. Good terminal dissi dissipation and this conclusion has been substantiated by further analysis with the deeper technical assessment of the NASIL back in Brassport.